40 some years ago, I bought my first pair of running shoes. Over those 40 years, technology and design has changed quite a lot, but nothing like in the last five years. This is the perfect example of how running shoe technology has changed over those last five years. And this is the ASICS Nova Blast 4. Well, hello everyone, Dog Walker Dave here. Today on the channel, I will be giving you my review of the ASICS Nova Blast version 4. Now, just some disclosures. I purchased these with my own money. ASICS didn't send them to me. Yeah, surprise, surprise. But I purchased these with my own money from ASICS Canada, sent to me, and I've been using them for the last little while. And here's what I have to say about these road running shoes. Just a little bit of a backtrack here. I came from a running and triathlon background. Most of my running when I was younger, 20, 30 years ago or so, or 40 years ago, I guess, I spent most of my running on the road. I worked in running shoe stores. I kind of know what works for me. Most of the time I like to get out on the trail, but over the winter months, I'm pretty much stuck to the road just because of the conditions. And not often do I buy a pair of road running shoes. The last pair I bought was the Hoka Clifton 9. And this is the first pair of ASIC shoes I've had in probably 10 years. When I raced Ironman Triathlon back years ago, I believe I raced every single Ironman in ASICS running shoes, but I just haven't worn ASICS in a long time. So this is my first opportunity to test an ASICS road running shoe in a very long time. And if you want to skip through all the boring parts, this shoe is amazing. Let's go over some stats first of all, and then I'll tell you why I believe this shoe is it's very, very nice. First of all, we have stack height of 41.5 millimeters in the heel, and we have 33.5 millimeters in the forefoot to give you an eight millimeter drop from heel to toe. The midsole is made of ASICS FF Blast Plus super critical foam. That's what most of the manufacturers are using now. If you wanna know more about super critical foam, just search the internet and it'll tell you what it's all about. Most manufacturers use this in their midsole and ASICS is no exception to this. It has a semi-gusseted tongue. And speaking of the tongue, it's very minimal, but it does the trick. Comes in at a weight of 279 grams for my men's US size 10 and a half, or in the UK, it is nine and a half. And it retails in this Centennial of Speed, I believe it's called, for $180 here in Canada. I believe it's $145 in the US. Couple of other things to point out. It's got a nice Achilles heel flare. And the outsole is ASICS high abrasion rubber. Very good grip. And from what I read about version three of the Nova Blast, which had a not so good grip on the outsole, this one performs quite well. Additionally, on the outsole, we have a bit of a cutout in the middle, which kind of acts like a little bit of a trampoline effect, gives it that nice little extra bounce, along with the FF Blast Plus midsole. As far as the sizing of it, I believe this fits true to size, and it has a nice little bit of width in the forefoot. It fits my foot perfectly. Before we jump into what it's like to run in, the most important criteria, in my opinion, and I believe many others, is that in order for a shoe to work well for you, the number one thing is it has to fit well. And for me, this does the trick. My Hoka Clifton Nines on my left foot, it's a little bit narrow in the forefoot, this region here of the shoe, and it gives me a little bit of a pinching on the outside of my left foot specifically, because that's my larger foot, but there's a generous amount of room in the forefoot. And ASICs are known to have a nice narrow heel I have zero problems with heel slippage. Don't have to do the runner's knot on this running shoe. With all that nonsense out of the way, what's it like to run in? I, I have to admit that, and I know this might seem like hyperbole, but this is probably the best road running shoe I have ever run in. I've run in a lot of road running shoes over the past 40 plus years of being a runner. And this, this just takes the cake. 
the midsole, that foam, and this applies to many new running shoes. The type of foam that's used in midsoles now gives it that nice little bit of bounce and pop, especially when you land in the forefoot and with the taper design of the forefoot coming up like this, kind of curves up, it gives you that nice little bounce from the midfoot through to the toe off. I haven't had a chance to test this in anything warmer than about minus 10 degrees Celsius because it's been like that for the last couple of weeks in Calgary. Even getting down as cold as minus 37 or 38, didn't take these out that day. The only difficulty I have with this in the winter, and this is when I'll primarily use this type of running shoe because I tend to stick to the trail a little bit more as it gets nicer, is that the forefoot, it's great breathability, which becomes a little bit of a difficulty for me when it gets colder. Wind flows nicely through that and you get a little bit of cold toes, but it's not that big of a deal. There's a nice wide base for landing on. You feel very secure and this shoe, from what I've experienced, I haven't had it at race pace, but I've had it at easy run pace and then a threshold pace run, among others. The Nova Blast performs well at just about every speed you want to throw at it. I know there are many running shoes that you could chew from out there, and I am not sponsoring or promoting any specific type of shoe. As I mentioned before, it has to fit your foot. That's the most important thing out of anything. The rest of the details, the stack height and the drop and gusseted tongue and the midsole composition and the upper and the lacing and all that kind of stuff, it's useless if the shoe doesn't fit. And I know it sounds like a cliche, but the shoe has to fit. If I were in a situation where I had to choose one shoe that I could use for basically all of my workouts, with the exception of doing a race, I would pick something like the Nova Blast 4. It's a remarkable shoe. Shoes have come a long way in the last five years and it's hard to fault most of the ones that you get. But for $180, everyone, I know that's not inexpensive because the price of everything has gone through the roof since COVID. But if you're spending $180, there are worse shoes out there for sure. And this hits just about every mark I'm looking for in a pair of running shoes. If I were road racing, yeah, I'd want to go out and buy a pair of road racing shoes with the carbon plate and the fancy this and fancy that. But for just about all my training, with the exception of going on a trail, I could get away with the Noble Blast and it would suit me just fine. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you own the Noble Blast 4 or maybe have owned any of the other Noble Blast versions, drop a comment below and let me know how they're working for you. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Get outside.